Hello, good morning, welcome back to the fish locker out on the boat. Out on an absolutely beautiful morning on the boat. Yeah, what a fantastic start. We've got quite small tides at the moment and there's a couple of wrecks that I've had my eye on for quite a while, off offshore. So we're gonna go and try and explore those. I don't quite know what the conditions are gonna be like when we get off there, because we're going a long way. Just figure it out when we get there. Maybe fish it on a drift, maybe fish it at anchor. The first order of the day though is to try and find some bait. Bait, then wrecking. Let's go. What you got, Sammy? Cool the fish. Enjoying that. See you later, lad. I have recently just bought a new camera and I am still learning how to use it. So please forgive me if it's not up to the usual quality. But I still think the footage of these dolphins is pretty cool. <laughs> well, that wasn't what I was expecting. <clears throat> That's a lovely tub gurnard. This is actually James's favourite eating fish. And this is probably just big enough to keep. So yeah, that's a little bonus. It is the time of year for good gurnards actually. I should have thought about that. When we get out there, we will get right out. I might put a little bait down on the bottom for a gurnard. <clears throat> you don't get a massive amount of meat on them. You only get little fillets, but they are absolutely delicious. What I'm looking for, ideally, is half a dozen mackerel or scad. I've got a little bit of frozen bit, I've got a little bit of squid and a little bit of cuttle. Just to do me so if I can't catch any fresh out here, when I get to the wrecks I'll try and pull out some pouting and whiting. But I want some mackerel and some scad. Some are oily, some are fresh. I've got that gurnard in a live bait tank now and he's just spat this out. A little tiny poor cod. So does that count as two fish? <laughs> they are a stunning looking fish aren't they? Look at them great massive pectorals but they are covered in spines you need to really be careful when you're handling them Look at that. You with a grunt? You're coming for tea, pal. That's not what I was after. Unfortunately, this guy's blown also, so... Yeah, this guy, unfortunately, won't survive. You can see his eyes. But he'll work for bait. He'll catch a ling and he'll catch a conger. Bait is not easy to find today. Managed to catch one scad, one horse mackerel. I can only afford to really give it another 10 or 15 minutes because we're going that far and I want to get the best of the conditions for the day. I've got a little bit of frozen bait, but it's just it's nowhere near as good. Nowhere near as good. The first wreck that we've come to, I'm going to try and give it a quick drift with a lure, just to see what the crack is. Never fished this one before, so I don't know what it's going to be like. Could be good, could be bad, could be, <laughs> could be covered in fish, could be covered in nets, I don't know. But yeah, the plan is, is I'm going to have a drift over it with a lure. See if there's any fish above it, any pollock. 
and I might, depending on how fast the drift is, I might have a go with a piece of bait, see if I can't pull a ling out. First drift's really just to find out which way it's all going. I think there is some gear near it. Did have a look around, but <laughs> it's difficult to difficult to spot when you're um, when you're steaming about. Spend a lot. Of, <laughs> spend a lot of time. I spend a lot of my free time. It's like when I can't be at sea, like when it's pouring down with rain or it's blowing a gale, researching areas to go. Oh, there's a fish. Oh, dropped it. Oh no, he's at it again. Has he? Oh. Must have been a little one. Yeah. Spend, a lot, spend a lot of time searching through charts and maps and navionics and things like that. Trying to find new places to fish when I come out like this. I think there must be some little fish down there because they're snapping at the tail of it. It's a good sign. It's worth the second drift then. Whenever I'm coming out and trying a new area like this, what I'll do is I'll do three or four drifts over different parts of the wreck. The north side, the south side, across the middle, across the back. Because you never know. I mean, there might be loads of fish on it. You just might be on the wrong place in the wreck. Because they do move around. Usually they will be on the downtide side of the wreck, hiding out of the wreck. And then when it comes towards slack water, they'll move up and be swimming around above it. Let's try that again. Just fishing with a rhubarb and custard sidewinder. This is a pen regiment solid carbon, and it's a 12 to 20. I've just got a little fathom, fathom two. You just need something that's whippy for Pollock. Something that's got a bit of bend and a bit of flex in it. If we do a couple of three drifts we don't go fish, go somewhere else. <laughs> Not every new place that you try is a winner. Oh, that was a good bite. Tricky is not to strike, just need to keep winding. It's a difficult thing to do. into a snag. Oh, where's my glove? Oh no, there's a fish there. That is weird. Now it is, it is stuck in something, but there is also a fish there. I can feel the fish banging. Chances of getting this back are really slim, <laughs> really, really slim. I've only got 20 pound flora on as a hook length. Might have been really really lucky here. Yeah? I'm thinking it was a piece of net or a piece of line or something and the lead had got stuck around it. By backing the boat up I've managed to free the lead up, back the boat up and put a glove on and just pulled and messed around and I think that whatever we hooked is still on there. 
<laughs> An absolute donkey of a pouting. <laughs> but that was oh, that was incredibly lucky. That was a that was a pure mixture there of a little bit of skill and a hell of a lot of luck. The lead, I felt the lead get stuck. So all I did was I backed the boat up and I moved around and then I put a glove on to try and pull it out. I knew that if the amount of pressure that I was putting onto it, it had to be the lead that was stuck. And yeah, there's, when you get stuck in a rock and you bring your lead up, there's usually scratches down your lead. That was a piece of net. There is a net on this wreck. I did. I, there is a couple of boys, there's, there's a couple of marker boys either side of the wreck. And at the same time, while I was busy trying to free that up, that lure's obviously kept swimming in the water. And it picked up an absolute jumbo pouting. <laughs> yeah, that lure is right down inside of his gullet. I think that's my sign that we'll try another wreck. This one's obviously got a net along it. Whew, that was lucky. Let's go. Let's try another wreck along the way. I've reached the final wreck that I wanted to check out today. I've been to a total of five wrecks. Three of them had fishing gear around them. Part and parcel of the time of year and the small tide. Yeah. One of them was definitely a net because I saw it on the sounder. The other ones could have been pots. I don't know. Quite often the best way of finding out whether or not there is any, any fishing gear on the wreck is that when you steam up to it, just have a look all around from every 300 yards in every direction. And you're looking for cans, you're looking for boys, you're looking for gans. And yeah, usually they'll line up like north to south. The wreck that I'm onto here is really broken up. It was a decent sized wreck, but it's broken up into a few pieces. And I'm hoping that it's going to have a lot of big conger on it. I wouldn't mind taking a ling, but I'm after conger really. I am going to use this drift to tell me which way I'm going to lay to put my anchor down. I'm going to have this one drift, and I'm going to go put the hook down. Put the, anchor, put the anchor down and maybe fish for three or four hours. Tide's running in the right direction now. One of the reasons why I took my time getting here and I tried out a couple more wrecks. Not only to try out the wrecks, but also because we were coming up to slack water. And I would rather when I put my anchor down that it's going to be sat in the same direction for a period of time. It doesn't matter that I'm not catching Pollock, that's not putting me off. It would have been good, it would have been a nice bonus. But <laughs> the proof of the pudding will be when we get sat back at the anchor and I drop some baited feathers down, if there's a loads of pouting and poor cod and whiting down there. Because that is the best sign you're going to get some ling and some conga. We'll see about putting the hook down. Now I have got videos on the channel already teaching you the theory of how to do this, how to anchor onto a wreck. Key thing is trying to find out which way your boat's going to lay, because at the moment I am in 89 meters of water, so I've had to position myself about 200 meters up tide of the wreck, so that when I get my anchor sat down, I'm positioned right above it. I'm going to be using a plow anchor. I've got a 17 foot boat, so I've got about 20 feet of chain, and I am using I can get it out, an Alderney ring and a boy to haul the anchor. Now, instead of having <laughs> instead of having hundreds and hundreds of meters of rope in one coil, I have them in two separate coils. So when I'm anchoring inshore, I just take the one, and when I'm anchoring offshore, I take the two. And all I do is when I fade one out, I just bend them together, and then take them apart when I'm pulling it back in. That's two drifts in exactly the same direction. We'll go and put the anchor down now. 
Wish me luck, I don't really fancy having to haul this and reshoot it too many times today. <laughs> We're in some deep water. I'm going to be letting out about hmm, 90, 180, 250, yeah about 250 metres of rope. The boat's tightened up onto the anchor line there. Slip it off like that. We should spin round and we sat right back onto the rack. The reason why I do it all off the side of the boat there, at the back, not only because I've got a working platform, not only because I've got this working platform that I've made here, you've got more space, you've got less chance of getting some of getting tangled around you, rather than working out that little hatch up the front. I'm going to be using a mixture of rigs. I'm going to be using either wrecking rigs or conga rigs. And I'm just going to use, to start with, a bit of frozen bait. On this rig, it's just Everything is just strong. Heavy line, heavy swivels, big hooks. Yeah. My chosen type of fishing like this, it's a 30 to 50 rod, and this is a, a 20 size reel. I've got 60 pound mainline braid, and I've got, I think on this rod, I think I've got a 100 pound rubbing leader. And that's just because I'm gonna be fishing right down in amongst the wreck. So that's the part of the line that's going to be most likely to come in contact with anything abrasive. All I do is I've just got a little bag there full of conga rigs already made up. Some conga rigs, some wrecking rigs. We'll, um, we'll mix and match, see how it goes. Yeah, now I've got a big bait down, I'm going to put a set of baited mackerel feathers down on the other rod to see if I can't pick up some whiting and some pouch. I can see some on the sounder, like smaller fish down on the bottom. I think that was just a big fish holding on. We had one bite like that and then it just banged it so yeah. I think what I'm going to do with that lighter rod is I'm going to suspend the bait a couple of feet off the bottom. And all I've done is I've just taken a fillet off the side of that pouting. Just using a lighter rig. I'm just going to use some strips of this pouting. Somewhere to give a little bit of flutter. I've had some absolutely fantastic fish with this method. Taupe, pollock, ling, spur dogs, cod, even bass actually. Yeah, all you do is you drop down to the bottom, touch the bottom, bring it up a couple of three, four feet. So you know that you're not, you don't want to be catching congas on this. This is the lighter rig, this is the lighter setup. This is for anything that's going to be swimming about above the wreck. If this wind keeps tacking off, we well, might have to pull the anchor up and move like 100 yards because it's, it's taking us right to the corner of the wreck at the moment. The cheeky fish has done it again. Dealing with that, and the other rod's nearly got taken over the side. Fish is taking it in at all, I can feel the fish moving.
can't believe we missed that one on this rod. I know what it is, it's a piece of f***ing net. Yeah, both rods have got stuck into them. There's a fish there. There's a fish definitely there, but there's a piece of net stuck. I see. I can feel a fish wagging on the end. Yeah, look. But the rig is fouled up in a piece of a piece of netting. Right, I'm gonna to have to put a set of gloves on, try and free these up, then pull the anchor up and move to a different part of the wreck. Which is definitely it. Yeah. I can feel what it is when I'm pulling the line. Piece of old net. That's a shame. We're going to have to pull the anchor up and reset it so we're sat on a different part of the wreck and hope that this net doesn't go all the way along it. There's no marker boys anywhere around here, so it must be a piece of old net that's got lost on the wreck. Ghost fishing net. What a nightmare. Try again. Yeah, the wind picked up a gust and blows where we. <laughs> it shows you how much we were. We were sat plumb in the middle of the wreck and then we ended up maybe 80, 90 metres away. And that was just by a change of a few degrees in the wind. I think this is going to be the conditions that we're going to have for the rest of the day now. Just hope it doesn't get any worse. Well, that is not what I was expecting. <laughs> In 89 metres of water on a wreck, I've caught an octopus. Not what I was expecting at all. Flopping about something terrible now and the anchor's slowly dragging. See what we can do. That was, that was a really good solid bite. Give it like two more minutes if you don't come back, I might have to pick up and reset. Just can't keep hold of them today. <laughs> That's just drifted past. Keep my eye out, it might be. It might be a canoe or an oar <laughs> or a rower somewhere it's stuck. Lost two good fish there. I don't want to say dogfish. I honestly don't want to say it. Oh, 
on a whole mackerel in yeah first part of 90 meters of water so you know it is a big dogfish but it's still a flipping dog greedy greedy dogfish if we're catching them on the wreck it doesn't say an awful lot for it yeah he's a big one isn't he? He's quite a big lad. I'm reluctant to give up on this wreck just yet. I know there's fish there. We got one nice fish out and I don't mind leaving. Been waiting of a bite <laughs> for ages. <gasps> now I've moved around to three different parts of the wreck. First one because there was a bit of net there, second one we just weren't laid right. And we just can't seem to get the fish out and the conditions unfortunately. The anchor trips one more time, it starts to drag. We aren't going to be able to put it back down. So I'm just trying to fish these baits out. I'd given myself <laughs> until two o'clock. It's like now five to two. Because I need to I need to get all packed up and sorted out and get back and pick James up from school. Just had our first proper, proper decent fight in this water again. Like being in a washing machine today. There'll be people at home saying, oh John, I feel seasick. You should be out here. <laughs> Today is going to be one of those days when I get ashore I'm still wobbling around. The stinking pooping dogfish. That's just, <laughs> that's just poetic. Yeah, covered in dogfish poop now. There is literally nothing good about dogfish. Bait robbing, stinking, spewing, pooping mess. Right, um, it's all up. It's all over my pack lunch. a little bite on this rod and I thought I'll leave it until I've cleared everything down and I'll put the rods away. Just struck into it there and it's just let go. Right, come to and pull the anchor up. This might cause us some issues. Of course we've had all this, well you can see all the weather that we're having. There's a lot of wind and a lot of swell. That means that that anchor has bedded in tight. That'll have buried, it'll either drag until it's found a rock and it'll be stuck up against a rock or it'll be buried right in the sand of the mud. So it always takes longer to pull it out. It's always harder to pull them out. And at the same time, you've got to fight with these conditions. So what you'll see me do is when I start the engine and I run up to the buoy, I'll wrap the rope around the after cleat and then I'll gently jog ahead until it starts taking weight and then move off, keeping an eye on the buoy. And also keeping an eye on the rope. If the rope starts to come too tight, as in the anchor's stuck fast on the seabed, you don't want to keep going because you'll end up breaking something on your boat. Just steam around in a circle and find a different route to pull it out. I'll show you.
home time. Yeah, not every, not every new wreck you explore is a good one. I would like to have had more fresh bait there. That would have, I felt like that would have given it its best try. But when you're catching dogfish on a wreck, it's kind of a, that's, <laughs> that's a sign, there's not much else. I did have a hook into a couple of couple of fish, but just because the conditions I couldn't do that with them. Time to go home now and get James from school. We did catch a really nice tub gurnard right at the very start. I'm going to fill it that off and I might cook that for James for tea. We'll see you in a bit. Wow, a long way to go. The trick with these is they are really spiny and you have to try and hold them in such a way they don't spike you. Nothing left on there. And then all you do, just shave the bones out. Two lovely little gun fillets. There you go. And there are the chub gun fillets from today's session. And there's a couple more that I had in the freezer from a previous session. Now James just likes his cooked really plain. So we're just going to bake it in the oven with a little bit of salt, a little pepper, some butter, and wrapped up. Chop chips and gurnard. Yes. Right. This one, this one here is a red. Yeah. Need a tub. So what we'll do is we'll share it. So that's a red. Oh, I'll tell you, what. you don't get very big fillets off them, but they are good fillets. Yes, you can have that one. Right. Okay. Two tubs and a red, and I've got two tubs and a red. Careful now because those plates are still hot. See you in the dining room. Go, 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 go. Good gun, Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I wish they grew to like 20 pounds. That'd be amazing. Mmm. These are lovely little fish. Oh, that fish of yours, James, looks delicious. Wow. Wow, oh, I'm jealous. Mmm, delicious. Empty yep. plates. Yep. I hope you enjoyed joining us. I hope you found it interesting. All the very best. See you later.